All right, let's talk through how to get a drop shot effect like this one in Canva. First things first, I'm gonna go ahead and delete my screen so you have just a blank artboard, artboard to work with. There are two parts to creating this drop shadow. The first is getting the drop shadow and putting it in to Canva and getting it set how you'd like. The second is going ahead and placing the image over the top of the drop shadow, and I'll show you how to do both. Let's get started on the drop shadow. First, you'll go over to Elements, and you'll want to go ahead and select the shape of a circle. You can choose any shape um, to match whatever it is that you're giving a drop shadow to. So if it's a rectangle shape, obviously you'd want to choose a rectangle. If it's letters, you would want to create letters. Um, and I'll meant to show you where to do that in just one second. But drop shadows are usually um, black or brownish, dark brown in color. And so with the circle selected, I'm going to go up to this gray square and click on it so that the color flyout option comes up. The prism one is what I'm going to choose because I want to pick my own brown shade. And I want to choose something that's pretty close to black. That looks good. At this point, this is going to be our shadow, but we need to save this file. And we want to save it as a more of a JPEG or photo file because Canva gives you some photo editing options, um, which includes a blur tool to kind of create that um, transparency look um, and blurry look of a shadow. And so we need to save this first as a PNG or a JPEG so that those tools will apply to our circle. So here's how you do it. We'll go over where to, in the top right corner where it says print cards and use this little drop down carrot. That should give us the option to download. So you'll click there. We want to change the file type to a PNG. Um, I want it to be a little bit higher res. I don't care that it will take a little bit longer to download. The quality is worth it in my mind. And then I want to make sure that my tr background is transparent. The reason for that is, is, is that if I've got additional text or elements that I want to have really close to my shadow, I don't want this portion of the white box um, around my circle to show up. Okay. At this point, I'll hit download and it's telling me that it's going to prepare my design and will automatically put it into my downloads folder. It pulls it up on my computer. It may not do that, but I highly recommend opening up the file once it's downloaded so you can see to make sure that, yep, everything looks great. I'll go ahead and close out of that circle and get rid of the celebration that my file was downloaded. And I can go ahead and delete this circle. Now at this point, what you would wanna do is go to the uploads to upload that circle you just downloaded, right? I already have done that. So I'll just go ahead and click on my drop shadow. So here's the drop shadow. I want it to be a little bit larger, so I'll just drag out the shape just a touch and move it just a little bit off center. Now remember, shadows are kind of see-through, which is making it transparent, and they're kind of blurry. With this circle selected, you can see now that the photo options appear in the top left corner. So I want to make sure that my circle selected, go to adjust, and you'll find this blur option. You can type in numbers or you can just use the slider. I like using the slider, so I'm going to give it a pretty big blur. Okay, and then the transparency is in the top right corner. It looks like that little invisible checkboard off to the right. So we'll click on that. And again, it's a slider option. I like my shadows to be pretty faint just because I want a little bit of pop, but not too much. So that looks good for right now. Now I'm just going to go ahead and click off. So you'll see kind of that blurry circle right there. Now it's time to go ahead and add the cupcake image that is circular, right? So we'll go over to elements and we want to go down to these frames and click see all. I decided that I do want to circle, but there's lots of options. And remember I told you that I would show you where to pick up the letters that you could make shadows out of. These letters were great for that. So you just click on one of these, just like you would the circle and then make it whatever color you wanted. And then you'd go ahead and create your shadows just like you did. Okay. But we want to add our circle image to that. So we'll go ahead and click this image and we can move it just around a little bit. You can already see that it's starting to have that shadow effect, but let's go ahead and put that cupcake photo in so that it looks really finished. I went ahead and typed in cupcake to search, and let's see if we can find the same one, or one similar, yep, there it is. Okay, so we'll just click and drag this over until it appears. Now, I want my cupcake to be more centered, so you'll just double click on the image, and you can see that what is kind of grayed out is outside of the circle. Whatever is gonna be included in the circle is bright just like it would be. So you can see my little crosshairs. I just click, hold, and drag until I get my cupcake where I want it, let it go, and then to turn off this grain feature so that we can get rid of those square corners, we just click on the white. 
So right here you can see that we've got the drop shadow and the light's coming in kind of from this top right. If I want to move the drop shadow, I have to make sure that I've selected that and then I would use my arrow keys just to move it around. I might move it down further, which would mean that the light is coming more from the top right corner as opposed to just the full right corner. I liked kind of where it is before I kind of go with that traditional top right corner fill. But then you can also adjust transparency. Maybe you want it a little bit darker. Um, I still really like the light and so I keep it there. And then I also like my shadows fairly tight, um, especially when they're on a white background. So not so much out here where I'm wiggling my mouse, but closer to the edge, okay? That gives a real clean, crisp look. So that's how you create a drop shadow around a circular image. If you were gonna do it around words, maybe you have a big headline like the word love for um, an article or a wedding announcement that you wanna shadow to. What I'd recommend doing is creating the whole word and getting it adjusted the way that you want it and then make it all black or all that black brown color to create a shadow and then create that whole shadow together. So the whole world word would be its own shadow. You could do each letter that would take some additional time, um, but it also gets rid of a little bit of your flexibility. So it's up to you to decide if you want to do the extra work up front so you have more flexibility or if you just want to adjust things and keep it just so and then create your shadow as a whole a whole whole word. But that's how you create um, a drop shadow in Canva.